In this uh, video, we'll talk about the various properties of nerve fibers. Properties of nerve fibers. And when we are talking of this property of nerve fiber, we are actually talking about only one exon and all these neurons, neurons join to make this uh, nerve. So when we talk of this membrane, we are talking actually of the exon membrane or the nerve fiber. The first property is known as excitability. When a nerve receives a stimulus, whenever it gets a stimulus, it gets into a state of local excitation. Local excitation. That means this excitation that we are talking of is only restricted to one point and that is where it is known as local excitation. We will understand all these properties in a much better manner when we understand the mechanism of conduction of impulse. But before that, we need to talk about this. After understanding conduction, we would go over these properties when we would discuss those conduction processes. Now, the stimulus, it can be of various categories. It can be a physical stimulus. A physical stimulus could be anything like uh, heat, cold, all these things would come under physical uh, stimuli. It could be a chemical stimulus. A chemical stimulus can be some kind of an acid, a base. Then it could be mechanical. Mechanical stimulus normally is something which is having an impact on it. That is something like injury. And it can be electrical also. Electrical stimulus. So any of those things when stimulate a nerve fiber, it comes into a state of local excitation. Only one point gets excited because of this stimulus. So this property of nerve fiber is known as excitability. The second property is known as all or none rule. Muscle fibers, they follow all or none rule. This means, or before that, let us talk about threshold stimulus and then we'll come to what exactly it means. Threshold stimulus, Threshold value is actually a value at which the nerve fiber would get excited. That means if a nerve fiber gets excited or is stimulated by any kind of stimulus and if it is of a particular value, then only the nerve fiber will get excited. And that value is known as the threshold value or such a stimulus is known as threshold stimulus. So we can also write it as threshold value stimulus. So what exactly is threshold? It is a stimulus of a particular strength. Stimulus of a particular strength. And what is this strength? Normal, in normal cases, this threshold stimulus should be between minus 55 to minus 60 millivolts. This is a normal value, which is like a threshold value. So if a muscle fiber is stimulated by say this value, then it will get excited. If it is less than thresh value, threshold value, then not a single nerve fiber will get excited. And if the threshold value increases beyond this, if it is more than threshold value, that stimulus, so does that mean that the contraction would be more? The answer is no, because the nerve fiber gets excited only when it receives a threshold value stimulus. So if it is getting a threshold value, it is going to get excited. But if 
the value is less than this, it will not get excited. If the value is more than this, its excitation is not more. That means whenever a nerve fiber is stimulated by a threshold value stimulus, its excitation is always maximum because it gets excited at this value. Less than this, no excitation. More than this, the strength of excitation is not more. So every time a nerve gets excited, it is always maximum. So it is always maximum whenever it receives a threshold stimulus. Now the third property is known as differential permeability. differential permeability. The membrane of the nerve fiber which is known as neurilemma. So if we draw this membrane this is neurilemma. Neurilemma shows differential permeability at different times. Permeability means uh, it is permeable to certain ions and it gets different for different ions. That is what is meant by differential permeability. In normal resting stage, at resting stage, the nerve membrane, okay, before that, the, oh, let me draw this as the exon. Let me draw this as exon. So whatever is inside is known as exoplasm or neuroplasm. So here it is, neuroplasm or exoplasm and the fluid which is outside is known as extracellular fluid. Now coming back to this resting stage when the nerve fiber is in resting position that means there is no stimulus which it has received at that time the membrane shows differential permeability there are more sodium ions on the outer side and less sodium ions on the inner side. There are about 10 times more, 10 times more sodium ions are on the outer side as compared to their number on the inner side. And when we are talking of outer and inner, outer is extracellular fluid and inner is the neuroplasm. Whereas the inner side has more of potassium ions and this number is 30 to 40 times more as compared to their number on the outer side. But the inner side has many organic molecules, especially negatively charged proteins, negatively charged proteins and because of which there is a differential uh, ion distribution on the either side or on two sides of the membrane. So the situation in the resting stage is this membrane. It has more sodium ions on the outer side, that is in the extracellular fluid. On the inner side of the membrane or in neuroplasm, there are more potassium ions. So if we talk of sodium and potassium, potassium ion concentration is much more on the inner side. But inner side also has many negatively charged proteins. And because of which the inner side of the membrane gets a negative charge and because of these sodium ions, the outer side of the membrane gets positive charge. So basically the electronegative uh, property of the membrane on the inner side is due to these proteins which are there on the inner side of the membrane. So inner membrane has on the, on the inner side of the membrane, these negatively charged proteins are more and they are responsible for this uh, electropositive on the outer side and electronegative on the uh, inner side. So at resting stage, more sodium ions outside, less sodium inside. More potassium inside, 
we are writing more sodium here but that does not mean that inside there is no sodium there are more sodium ions on the outer side there are more potassium ions on the inner side sodium ions are 10 times more on the outer side as compared to inner side potassium ions are 30 to 40 times more on the inner side as compared to outer side but inner side that is the neuroplasm has many many negatively charged proteins because of which the inner side of the membrane gains a negative charge and outer side of the membrane is comparatively positive so it is electropositive on the outer side and electronegative on the inner side so this is the differential permeability and at resting stage the membrane is more permeable to potassium ions this, this is only during resting stage this membrane the membrane that is neurilemma we are talking of has some special proteins these proteins are known as channel proteins so this neurilemma has channel proteins and these proteins are responsible for transport of these ions on either side of the membrane depending upon which ions they are transporting we call them sodium channel potassium channel calcium channel and chloride channels so these are four different types of proteins which are present and these proteins work according to different voltage different charges different values so at a certain value sodium channel would open at a certain value potassium channel would open and that regulates the entry or exit of these ions so this is about differential permeability of the nerve fiber and this plays a very important role in the receiving of stimulus and conduction and here we will write one more thing that is resting potential so if a galvanometer is connected and a potential difference is calculated inner is electronegative outer is electropositive so resting potential is minus 70 millivolts so these are few important things about differential permeability there are few more properties of the nerve fibers which we will discuss next the next property is known as conductivity so the impulse which is generated now here we are using a new term that is impulse let me quickly draw that neurilemma which we uh, made when we were understanding differential permeability we said it is electropositive on the outer side and electronegative on the inner side and this is due to differential permeability of the membrane suppose here the membrane receives a stimulus at this point there would be some change which would take place and if we draw the next stage it is going to look like this at that point where only the stimulus was received sodium ions are going to move in so when sodium ions move in there would be more positively charged ions on the inner side so inner side will become electropositive as compared to the outer side this is what is known as that the impulse has been generated and now this impulse has to travel on the membrane the property by which this impulse travels on the membrane is known as conductivity so what has happened is a stimulus has re reached the membrane the stimulus can be of any kind it could be a prick it could be an electric thing and the place where the stimulus has been re uh, received at that place the membrane's permeability is going to change sodium ions are going to move in they were more outside now they are coming in so if more and more sodium ions come in the inner side of the membrane becomes electropositive 
outer side becomes electronegative and this is what is known as impulse and we call that impulse is generated. Now this impulse is going to travel. This positive would move here and this would come here. So in the next stage what's going to happen is this was original positive with negative. Now this positive charge has come here and negative here and the positive negative have gone here. That means the stimulus from point 2 has reached to point 3 or we can say it has traveled on the membrane and this property is known as conductivity. The next property is known as refractory period. Refractory period is actually a resting period. It is resting period. Now, in short, what exactly is going to happen in resting period? Here we said the stimulus was received. Say let us number it as 1, 2, 3 and 4 and 5 sides. The stimulus was received at point 2. Now from point 2 it has moved to 3. And what has happened at point 2? The outer side has become electropositive. This original electropositive charge, it was because of sodium ion. What came in was actually sodium ion. But what goes out is potassium ion. So now, if at this point, if the membrane receives one more stimulus, what is going to change? Membrane's permeability. For what? For sodium. But outside, there is no sodium. There is potassium. So, membrane needs some time to correct these ions. So, let us understand this one more time. Normal case, it is electropositive. Which ion is responsible for this positive charge is sodium ion. When it receives the stimulus, this is the point where the stimulus was received. Membrane permeability changed. What happened? the membrane became more permeable for sodium ions. So these sodium ions, they moved in. So inner side of the membrane became electropositive and that was because of sodium ions. Now that sodium ion which was here moved to position 3. And at position 2, there is still a positive charge. But at this time, the membrane has become more permeable for potassium ions. It is sending potassium ion out, not the sodium ion. So, charge wise it is correct. It is electropositive. But is it because of sodium or potassium? It is because of potassium. At this stage, if we give one more stimulus to this same point, what's going to happen? Sodium channels are going to open. Membranes permeability for sodium will increase. So, the sodium entry is allowed. But there is no sodium outside, there is potassium. So membrane requires little time to correct these ions. It should get enough time to replace these potassium ions with sodium ions. So as soon as sodium ions come here, you give a stimulus, membrane is going to let sodium ions come in. So this is the refractory period. And we divide it into two categories. It is called absolute refractory period and relative refractory period. What is absolute refractory period? Absolute refractory period is when if you provide a stimulus, the nerve is not going to excite, get excited. It is exactly same situation. Here, there is no sodium ion in this area. So even if sodium channels or gates open, there is no sodium ion. So absolute period is when even after giving the stimulus of the threshold value, the nerve fiber is not going to get excited. Now this period is gone. After few milliseconds, some sodium ions would go because of sodium potassium pump. So some sodium ions start moving out. Now, it is in the relative refractory period. Now, if there is a stimulus given, 
there are few sodium ions. So when the membrane permeability changes for sodium, some sodium will be able to come in. So it can be defined as no excitation even on giving threshold stimulus. And in this case, excitation can take place, but there is a condition that the threshold uh, or the stimulus should be of higher than threshold value. So, nerve can get excited when more than threshold value stimulus is provided. In case of human beings, this absolute refractory period, it lasts for 4 milliseconds and this lasts for about 3 milliseconds. So it's a very, very short period of time in which the nerves are able to correct this. And this correction is done with the help of sodium potassium pumps that we will understand when we come to the process of conduction of impulse. Now the sixth property, which is the last property of a nerve fiber, it is known as summation. Summation basically means something summed up. We said that the nerve fiber would get stimulated or excited only when it receives the threshold stimulus. If the intensity or the value of stimulus is less than threshold, then it will not get stimulated at all. But if that less than threshold stimulus is continuously given, then the nerve fiber gets excited because of the summed up effect. That is known as summation. So, when stimuli of less than threshold value are given continuously, then the nerve fiber gets excited. Nerve gets excited. This property is known as summation. So these are the unique and special properties which are shown by the nerve fibers. Now, I know this understanding these properties is slightly difficult, but these properties become more clear after we understand the process of the generation of stimulus and the conduction of stimulus. So as we discuss conduction of stimulus, I'll keep reminding you of the different properties which are getting exhibited. So in the next segment, we'll talk about conduction of nerve impulse.